So I've told you about two types of antibodies that appear on the B surface of the B cell, the IgM and IgD. In fact, there are actually five different classes of antibodies. Let's look at what are the differences between these different antibodies and how they function. So five classes of antibodies, IgA, IgD, IgE, IgG, and IgM. So their light chains are the same. The heavy chains, the difference is in the heavy chains. So IgA, for example, has the alpha chain. The IgD has the delta, E, epsilon, G, gamma, and M, mu. So there are also subclasses of these antibody classes. For example, IgG has one, two, three, and four classes, having gamma one, two, three, and four heavy chains respectively. Just so that you know that there's even subclasses of the antibody classes. The various heavy chains give a distinctive conformation to the hinge and the tail regions. There are certain antibodies, we will see uh, classes of antibodies, and there are subclasses that have distinct properties of their own, and they can also, their FC region can, for example, bind the receptors present on the surface of different cells. So, first of all, let's talk about IgM. This is the first class of antibody that appears on the surface of a developing B cell. You have already seen that. But that IgM is the type of IgM that is embedded on the surface of the B cell. Later on, once the B cell has been activated, it will start producing antibodies that are not only present on its surface, but these antibodies are now released into the bloodstream where they can encounter the antigens that stimulated their production and neutralize them. This is, of course, the major class of antibody which is secreted in the early stages of primary antibody response. Once these IgMs are secreted, they form pentamers, meaning that five of these antibodies come and join together and they form a pentamer which has now 10 actually antigen binding sites. So, in order to form this pentamer, there's an actually another type of protein that is required. J-chain, for example, is required. Uh, this basically joins, helps join these five IgM molecules and form the pentamer. The binding of a single antigen to a secreted IgM pentamer can activate complement system. Complement system is a group of proteins that are also secreted and these proteins basically help or assist the immune response which can either kill the offending pathogen directly or it can also mark the pathogen for phagocytosis by phagocytic cells. So, the next class is IgG. IgG is a monomer. Phagocytic cells have receptors that can bind the FC region of these antibodies. Now, remember, FC region is the very tip of the tail of an antibody. So, these pathogens can bind the FC region using their spe special receptors, which causes activation of these phagocytic cells, and the mechanism by which they engulf the pathogen is receptor-mediated endocytosis. Binding of receptor to the FC region of IgG causes activation of certain proteins that en cause the engulfing of that pathogen. IgG is the only antibody that can pass from mother to fetus through placenta, which are in contact with mother's blood, these cells, placental cells, have special receptors that can bind the IgG molecules and internalize them and pass it on to the fetus. So let's look at a photograph of a phagocytic cell endocytosing a pathogen. So here we have a pathogen. This pathogen has been decorated by antibodies, IgG antibodies, and the very tip of these antibodies is the FC region, this right here. 
this tip of the antibody IgM antibody can bind special receptors on phagocytic cells called FC receptors. When they bind the FC receptors, it activates these cells and causes receptor-mediated endocytosis. Basically, the membrane will engulf this pathogen and it enclose it in a vesicle. And once this pathogen has been enclosed in a vesicle, this vesicle will fuse with the lysosome and cause the destruction of this pathogen. Here on the screen, you can also see an electron micrograph of a phagocytic cell engulfing a bacterium. So this is a photographic form of what we talked about. IgA antibodies are transported through the secretory epithelial cells that line the different ducts. These cells, these epithelial cells also have a special FC receptor. Now this FC receptor is different from the FC receptor which is present on the surface of, of the phagocytic cells. This FC receptors bind IgA molecules. These IgA molecules, once they are released, they form, they can also form the dimers and the dimers is engulfed by these, these cells which are forming the lining of a duct. This process, grabbing an antibody on one side of the cell, moving it across the cell and releasing it in the lumen of the duct is called transcytosis. So these ducts, these secretory ducts, these antibodies result ending up in secretions. For example, milk, our tears, other also body secretions can have these IgA antibodies. I would like to mention that these receptors, these FC receptors can also transport IgMs into secretions. But however, by their binding to IgM is less efficient than the IgA molecules. IgE molecules, B cells produce IgE antibodies. These antibodies are secreted by the B cells. These antibodies then bind a different type of white blood cell. This, is, this white blood cell can be a mast cell. This mast cell also have FC receptors. These FC receptors bind the FC region of IgE antibodies. So these mast cells are passively acquiring the antibodies. These mast cells do not make antibodies of their own. IgE molecules decorate the surface of these cells. And once when antigen binds to these antibodies, they cause release of histamine. And this histamine can cause, as we have talked about, vasodilation, leaky blood vessels, and also cause allergy in some cases. So IgE, basically, important point, is secreted by the B cells and passively acquired either by the mast cells or other cells can also bind these IgE bodies. So, for example, basophils can also bind these antibodies. So these mast cells or the basophil cells passively acquire IgE antibodies and once these antibodies are triggered, they can cause vasodilation. Also, I would like to mention that these release of histamine can also cause symptoms of allergic reactions. For example, hay fever, asthma and hives. Uh, they can also be caused if these cells are activated and they release uh, the histamine which is present in their vacuoles.